Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Hey, the top end of Stevenson! Right, welcome to Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who has been once again pining for Scott Sinclair on Twitter this week. It's Chris Cole. When are you going to get up, Chris? I feel like shit, mate. I just want him back. Look, Why do you want him back? Because I miss him. He was a good character. And he was, Be- you know, cause he, good. Because he was better than Nakamura. Listen. He wasn't better than Nakamura. I just want to say, obviously lockdown's affecting a lot of people. Um, and obviously people are suffering and it's gone to their head and stuff like that. And it really isn't funny. But um, I do think it really has affected Chris Cole. Um, 2100 hours. Um, when was it? Tuesday or Wednesday? Was it we, me, Bob and John received this message from Cole that really made me really want to reach out to him and just check yeah, it out. Yeah, man, hold on a second. Hold on, who are you? You've not even been introduced yet. Uh, but before I get introduced, this, this is the, this is all about Toll. So we we're just a wee bit worried about you after you sent this message. General, I've just been told Rangers are in talks with Tommy Wright. <coughs> Tommy Wright, aren't he? The manager's fucking... Rangers, it's probably all of the shite, obviously. Me, you get all of these fucking messages and stuff all the time, but... There you go. That's a football daft exclusive. Tommy Wright is coming to Rangers according to Crystal. Right, right well, I, I'm going to take two things for this, right? The first thing is, I was only passing all the information that I'd been given. Right. And the second thing is, I can't put anything in the group chat anymore. <laughs> That's the one and only time. I'm sorry. But it was just a cracker. No, but- there was, I mean, even, I think it was Saturday morning or Sunday morning, we're getting our weekly update about Rangers from Chris Toll, big Celtic man, Aye. every week. Aye. It's like Rangers, Rangers are going to be light years behind Celtic because we were only getting a million a year for Chris Story, and now it's like Tommy Wright's going to be the manager. Aye. Chris, what's going on? Are you all right? Well, see, to be honest with you, I should have really have thought more about the Tommy Wright thing because there's no way... Tommy Wright's going to go to a club that strips are made off of some fucking golf <laughs> company. You know what I mean? So now... Well, you're, better than Joma. Yeah, your, de- <laughs> your, de- <laughs> your defence to this is just absolute savage attacks now. Yeah, you Listen. know, it's the best form of defence is attacks. So right, OK. Just- and now, <laughs> welcome a man who this week got a shout-out from Michael Barrymore. Off true. It's great, though. Ah well, it's Barrymore's one of my mates. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Showbiz Grado coming out, man. But I just got showbiz. I just I seen uh, Jonathan Ross in the telly earlier, and I was telling her, got a friend about how I can him as well. Um, and that's another one drop. But right, I, right, so that's that's so in the past few weeks it's been Michael Barrymore, Jonathan Ross, and Edward Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Barrymore's gave me a lot of advice over the years when I was playing at Kings and stuff like that. I like to check in on him now and again. Um, <laughs> used to see he's going all right. He kind of made a nicer guy. And uh, yeah. my, my, my mate, what? It was my mate yeah. Paul Shaw's birthday the other day. And uh, basically all last week I had been pestered by four of the boys in the group chat. Listen, it's a wee man's birthday. Can I get Scott Arfield today a shout out? Listen, it's a wee man's birthday. Can we get, um, what do you call him? Him we sign for Cali? Jones. Jones, right? And then everybody went, it's Shaw's birthday on Tuesday, you need to come up with a good one. I goes, I've got it. I've got I've got the perfect, perfect video message for Shaw Buzz. So I got this. Hello there. This is a message for Paul Shaw. I know you're a big fan, but and uh, Greg asked me if I would send you a message. And apparently you sit both of you having a drink and watching Shy Your Lucky. I can't think of a better recipe to spend the night. Good luck to you, lads. Nice to see you. See you, Paul. All the best. Ta-da. See, I thought he was That's going to go. Nice. I thought he was going to go. Nice to see you. To see you, and then he remembered that was Bruce's catchphrase, and then he kind of wound it back in a wee bit. But that was good, wasn't it? I want, I want it back. I wanted him to say that. I want, I want, I want it back. What? I want. 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 I want
Top mid the bottom. Top mid the bottom. I will win all the heat. No comment. Comment. <laughs> no comment. Right, troops. As we record this podcast, Scottish football is going through quite a a big thing at the moment. What do you think? Rangers dossier. What do you think, Sanna? I don't know, man, but did you see that tweet earlier on the day? It's the first time where I've ever kind of questioned the Rangers PR twittering. Aye, Rangers just said, they released the official Rangers Twitter feed. i seen released a thing saying Rangers will not be bullied or something like that, wasn't it? I don't know how I feel about that. Well, you need to wait and see what's in the dossier to see what you feel about it. And i see Britney Spears has already said he's swifted through Hoffett and he can't find anything that says anything about bullying. So, surely they've no, you know, wrote this dossier and there's nothing in it. Well, it's been a long time coming into it and there's been so much talk about it. So, you'd like to think there is some sort of substantial evidence of some wrongdoing at some point, you know? Well, well I think there's been substantial evidence of wrongdoing. At some point, it was just to prove that there's definitely like substantial evidence of wrong, wrongdoing at some point, but it was away back in 2012. You finished? Aye, you, you good with that one? Mate, yeah. why don't you just save that for one of your voice notes this week, mate? So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> this time next week we should know a wee bit more about it. Aye, I know, I know. Yeah, I just see, I've just seen a tweet that's coming from Michael Stewart that says... Oh, fuck, that's all we need. I know how much... Breaking news from Michael Stewart. Here we go, everybody. He says, in the, words the of trialist. A, in the words of a board member who had a wee read of the dossier, as yet, I can't find a whistle or anyone with the breath to blow it. What a thoroughly unedifying episode this has been. Mm. I would beat him. I don't... I mean, the thing is... I've not got an opinion on this, man. I don't see, to be honest with you, I don't really have an opinion on it either because I don't know what's going on. I wonder what's in it. What do you think's in it? What do you think somebody's done? I mean, I I thought it was going to be something scandalous, like an email, do you know what I mean? Aye. Aye. It's like Donald Trump released the fucking emails. Hillary. Jink, Jink, Neil Con- Doncaster's been mad with one night and just sent to an abusive voice notes or something to like fucking Dave King or something. <laughs> you better just fucking take yes. You better take yes. He's a fucking out. He's a out. By the way, see what you're saying there, he's a out, he's a out, man. There could get to a point where the two fucking parties are that raging at each other, the Rangers just go like, ah, do you know what, fuck you. Mm. I have to um, say that. There's some brilliant the hashtag dossier day is trending currently on Twitter. <laughs> and there's some brilliant responses. Uh, someone's put reports coming in that Dundee can't see the dossier in their mail folders. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, is there any mail? Just have a look. Yeah, but how long? How it took they went through it really quick, but didn't they? Two hundred pages and like fucking hour. Must have been Johnny Five reading it. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, was, I was actually thinking that, but what I think's happened is, uh, like you said, Graham Spears, uh, he, uh, he tweeted like nearly three hours ago saying that he was halfway through it. I, it, I must have, it must have been released to more than just the teams. It must have been. Oh, aye, that'll go to folk. I, I think initially it was released to just the teams, but obviously it's going to make- fucking everybody and their granny's going to be passing it on, isn't it? I mean, if we if we can get a Bristol Rovers manager WhatsApp <laughs> message to his players in our WhatsApp group, do you know what I mean? I'm I, sure a, a, a club like Rangers releasing a dossier can get released to the media. What you, remem- what you need to remember as well is Stuart Roberts. Is it Stuart Robinson? The Rangers? Stuart Robertson. Stuart Robertson. He's on the SPFL board as well. So they'll have, a, they'll have a fair insight into what it's been. You know what I mean? And for them to come out with such a quick response to it, saying, we've read it and there's nothing in it, then they've Mate, either not read it or they've had it for fucking ages. Mate, that, that statement was fucking copied and pasted last night. That was put out before they even read any it, man. That was the, going to be the response right away, man. Who was that? Who's his? SPFL's fucking quote, man. That was very... I, I, there was somebody was sitting at 6 o'clock this morning ready to push a button to release that, man. Aye, they knew about it. Mm-hmm. Aye, scheduled. Aye. <laughs> uh, a scheduled tweet, man. Like a scheduled Zoom meeting day in football daft. They've got a scheduled tweet ready to work, man. But we'll soon find out, Chris. We'll soon find out. But Chris, if you want to 
maybe just go back on what we're talking about, maybe release who your sources are. Um, Tommy Knight exclusive. I will be putting out a dossier to each member of the show um, with my information. Who's, um, to, who's, who's, your, who's your mole? I need, I, need two, two more days. I need two more days, lads. I'll let you know on Saturday. Right? <laughs> Bold after I see you there. This week on the show, we've got Ross McCrory, current Rangers player who's on loan at Portsmouth, and obviously the Legends Lottery. And we'll see if Chris has been able to get somebody this week. It's your shot, isn't it, Chris? It's my shot this week, Trips. I'll tell you that. It's been a... It's been a fucking struggle. I'm not. I'm not going to lie to you. It's been a struggle. Aye, Aye. that's interesting. I say I'm. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And remember, if you've got any banter for us, please get on the Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. Right. If you've been involved in a road traffic accident and it's not your fault, G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover the costs from the at-fault party and sort out a like-for-like vehicle replacement. They're also going to organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, unfortunately, if that's the case, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big fat check. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't call call, they don't buy data, and once you process your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is Nicole, and and it's not just Nicole, Nicole and the team over there, they will not take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, get yourself on to G4 claims on 01698767, my favourite aircraft, it's 172, that's 01698767. 767 <coughs> 172. That's 01698767172. Get them at not claim Not at fault. Get them at not at fault claim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims. Not at fault claims. <laughs> Made easy. <laughs> Football dafts. Big question. Mind that time when you were, you were allowed to leave the house and go places, like the pubs, restaurants, football matches, huh? Mind that? Yep. I remember it well. Good times, wasn't it? Uh, really good times, granted. Remember we used to go to pret a you and know, all that, Gredo? Aye, Nando's and all that. Aye. Right, well, this week, the big question is, we wanted to ask, when you were out and about, did you ever meet any football players in strange places? I know oh, you, met Ross, you met Ross McCrory at Somerset Park, didn't you? Yes, I also <laughs> met Ian Wright at a car show at the SEC when he was up here playing for Celtic. Um, I met uh, Andy Hardy in front of me in the queue at Nando's. I met El Haj Juf in the Corinthian. He was having a drink with Peter Martin, of all people. That was bizarre. What a left peg he has, yes, Peter Martin. Yeah, he's a good he's player for, for, uh, good for player. the belly on him. Yes. Um, and also, um, I met the Phil Motherwell team when I was in Magaluf and I was a wee boy, which I've spoken about before, and I think Willie Faulkner threw me into the pool, which was just gallows. So it was either him or Brian Martin. But um, aye, that's... There. You've not had many experiences of meeting many players, no? But it's strange places, you know what I mean? I'm, nah, I know. I'm, I'm in I'm showbiz now, I meet these kinds of times, you know what I mean? Nah, what, 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 my now wife, my girlfriend at the time, we went to Lanzarote, right? Lanzarote. We went to, we went to Lanzarote fucking grotty, right? <laughs> so me and Nicola went there. And then my mom and dad were in a hotel at another part of Lanzarote, right? So then we went through to see my mom and dad. Four of were just sitting, and my wee brother was there as well. And we were just sitting having lunch in their hotel at, next to the pool. And right next to us, having lunch with his missus, was Robbie Errol. Well, that's a good one. How weird is that? Ah, Robbie Errol, legend, Robbie Errol. Ah, Robbie Errol. And I'm like to my dad, and you can never understand a word my dad says. I'm like, there's Robbie Errol. He's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he didn't know who it was. But I'm like, I was a wee bit starstruck, even though uh, I'm not a big fan of Robbie's work. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was an average not a big player, fan of yours, mate. Sorry. I know. Oh, he, he, no, he definitely isn't a fan of mine, mate. I told him you can get River City in England. He wasn't interested. <laughs> But I met, I, met, I met the full Seville squad, Sevilla squad, sorry. 
in uh, Buchanan Street the, the day before the UEFA Cup final at hand. Why? The whole line of my, I've got pictures with Danny Alves and fucking all of them, man. So we'll have Aye. big Freddy Canuti. Big Canuti. Fucking big flamboyant Freddy, man. Uh, some, by the way, the all of them pure stopped and had time for me. It was my mate Jarvis that was with We were just, in fact, you know what it was? I was about to go away because I was meant to be going on to Big Brother. And anyway, I was in really? by... I was in buying stuff because uh, you need to get all the stuff that hasn't got any emblems on it or anything like that. Aye. All, my, all my clothes had like Nike ticks and fucking all of that. And I went into the town to buy basically a new wardrobe because I was meant to be going on to Big Brother. And we fucking we bumped into the full squad for Sevilla. Was that the year Van Troyer was in it? I don't know. No, that was a celebrity one, was it not? It's a joke. <laughs> God rest them. God rest them. Yeah. <laughs> but told that's interesting. <laughs> really, did you get to the finals? Yeah, I was. I was away in Hayden. I was away in France. No way. I. I you know, I, never told us this. Well, I was meant to be going on to Big Brother. I. It's a. It's a long story. That's why I've no. Keep it for it. next week, mate. That's a good one. Aye, but anyway, that's next week. Long, long, long and short, yeah, is it? Aye. Let's say we can in gardens. Oh, it, man. Best thing about that is Big Brother stuff. That's cool. That's mad. That to is think you can... awesome, mate. That's awesome, mate. That's cool. Hey, mate, thank fuck I never got on it, man. That's all I'll say. I'll, t- I'll tell you next week what year Thanks, it was. Sir. What, what, uh, se- what series was it just before you let me go? It was, it was a series that Brian Bell won it, and it was... Oh! It was, remember at the start of it, it was all women in one guy. That's, that's the reason why I never got on it, because it was going to be all women. I was, I was hiding in an apartment in a place called Hornfloor, in France. Did you, did you get paid for that? What, aye, yeah, you, you get £250, uh, £200 a day. A day, yes. is that about? Aye, um, it, mate, it was fucking nuts, man, honestly. A fishing village in France, that's how far out the way they put me. That's crazy, mate. That's crazy. I want to hear the full story of that. So oh, next, week, next week we're getting Crystal's dossier Exclusive. and we're getting the fucking Big Brother story. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just call it told after next week. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, some some listeners right now. Danny McEwen said, I met Chris Kamara at a water park in Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> wonder, wonder if Maka was hanging about ready to dump two films. <laughs> Fucking drew him. He didn't do the flume with him and just held his head under the water. <laughs> un- un- unbelievable, Bob. Right, unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, John Mackey, is that John? John McHale, sorry. I was in Sainsbury's party queue behind Wim Janssen. He bought a lasagna, ready meal for one, and a single kiwi fruit. I felt a bit sad. That's why he was only there a year, mate. Actually, I replied to this guy. I, on fucking, I fucking know you did, you cunt. <laughs> I did. I wish you a bad day, mate. Yeah, I replied to him. Maybe it was for Walter Smith in his back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Rob Harvey. <laughs> that was a good one, too. It was. Ho- Holiday Inn in Basingstoke went for a quick call on Nish after a few beers, and Jimmy Greaves snuck a peek at my old boy at the urinals. <laughs> Once I caught him looking, he laughed and said, All right, mate. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> That's quite good, actually. Good, Brian Roberts writes, he says, I was peeing, another peeing story, peeing next to Ronald De Boer in the toilets in our chaos back in the day. I knew oh. it was him. But said you look like Frank the Boer, <laughs> <laughs> and he was stuck and said, and he said, "That's my brother. I'm Ronald. That's fucking brilliant." It's a cracker, man. I'm going to hear that to any twin that I meet now. The McCoys. <laughs> <laughs> Murray says Alex McLeish when he was Rangers boss on the platform at Wolverhampton train station. He was absolutely steaming. <laughs> Said he was down watching Alex Ray. Must have been impressed, but he was probably seeing two of them on the park. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Boba Higan. <laughs> I met Michael Moles at the top of Ben Nevis. <laughs> well, of all the places you're, you're no hitting, you're bumping into a footballer. Well, I mean, up to the top of Ben Nevis, I still fucking Moles <laughs> standing up there. I'll have you. <laughs> William Bill says he met Nacho Novo at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Matty Collins, Niall McGinn, 
Barran Ballroom at Wolfstone's gig after beating Aberdeen 9 0. Okay. You probably bumped into him that night and all then, too, did you? Never been to a Wolfstone's gig in my life, mate. Got all the albums, but I've never been here again. What's the next one? Um, we've got Chris, Chris Matthews. Met Stephen McGarry at a swing park at a trig, uh, at trig Beach, Perth, Australia. I got my got my kids to go and play with his kids so that I could talk to him. <laughs> Luckily, I had my little shorts on, so he managed to uh, chat about football, basically. That's, that's pretty much the exact same as how I got talking to Lee Miller, and that's not even a lie. Wait, I, <laughs> I, I, was right I was like, that looks like Lee Miller over there. And he, I waited on him walking back to me, like, walking by me like a pure fucking creep. And they're like, excuse me, mate. Do you name Lee? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. I was like, we are now friends for life, okay? <laughs> Good days. He's been gone in fucking all inclusive package holidays every year since. I know. I can't remember. I feel bad for you. He's kind of good this year. Hey, what's the next one we've got then, lads? Ian McSee says, I was at Blade of Drummond Safari Park and I got my face painted in the hope that my son would get it done. Nope, he refused. I met Sasa Papage and got a photo taken with him. I wonder where he got his face painted. <laughs> oh, son, there's a tiger. Sasa, but Papage with a tiger face. <laughs> Papage, man. Mr. Steady, man. man. The Red Mike. McGann. Great Green Red McGann, he, he drove. Like Antonio Van Vantre met George Cadet in Pizza Hut on a Gale Street when I was younger. Got his autograph in a Pizza Hut napkin somewhere. Uh-huh. George Cadet, man. George Cadet. Everybody. Mm. He was a great striker. But he was. He was a good football player, wasn't he? He had the spaghetti. He was Portuguese. He was... One of these. Ian Fraser writes, Stephen Hughes was sat behind me on a bigger bus from Dundee to Aberdeen. I was playing as Aberdeen and football manager at the time and was paranoid that you could see that I just looked at that bro. <laughs> He'd went to your mate's team. <laughs> so he did, I had him with Ricky Little. That would be a good wee line actually, Stephen Hughes and Ricky. <laughs> right, David M. C. <laughs> went, into, went into Da Vinci's on Queen Street after a night out. Was at the front of the queue ready to pay for my chips and curry sauce and the guy behind me insisted that his mate would pay for it. It was only then when I was walking out that I realised his mate was Stephen Fletcher. Didn't feel quite so bad about him paying for once I realised top bloke though. Stephen Fletcher buying your chips and curry sauce in your route. That's time, yeah. I must admit, I also met on the day that Pretty Green opened in uh, Glasgow, we were waiting me and my brother for, for Liam Gallagher. I did eventually meet Liam Gallagher in the BA Lounge on my birthday, June the 2nd, uh, 2018. It was the best day of my life. Who do you but, play for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to the point uh, that we ended up meeting Jonathan Johansson the steed, and he couldn't be any more brand new. How many misses? Who is fantastic? Um, we spoke. We spoke to the two of them, and we both explained how gutted we were that we that we only saw a glimpse of Liam Gallagher. But JJ spoke to us in Buchanan Street for a good five ten minutes, and that's my cool story, bro. All right, listen up, man. Listen. Well, that's the ending. That's a good ending, it up. Aye, okay. That is a good out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so in Football Daft, we've made it our purpose in life to find the legends of the Scottish football's past and our legends lottery. Um, each week, one of the team is tasked with getting a legend onto the show. Last week, Gredo. Yeah. You came through for us, didn't you, bro? I finally <laughs> fucking produced the goods, Kieran Mack and Espy. Kieran Mack and Espy. <laughs> um, so, this week, it's fell on the shoulders, the admittedly broad shoulders of myself. <laughs> um, and I've, I've actually, I've, I've came through, lads. I've came Man. through. I have, I. Um, I've managed to get a, a genuine legend of Scottish football. A genuine legend of Scottish football, somebody who has won silverware out with the old firm. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen and Graham and John, please welcome on to the show, Mr. Mickey Weir, Hibs legend. Whoa. Hey Mickey, thanks very much for coming on to the show. Just introduce you to Stephen and Gredo, lads, that's Mickey on. How you doing Mickey? I'm oh, fine guys, how are you? Not bad, mate. Not, Not bad. bad. How's lockdown treating you? 
ايه انا برضه تشربه هو تشربه عزاء ايه استفقه استفقه because just you know you used to be active and you know, all getting out every day and doing the stuff you want to do and then you're, you're stuck in the house doing virtually none but just watching more and more football all go football games whatever mm-hmm. I can put my hands to at the minute you know you watched the 1991 Scottish League Cup final back on YouTube then again it's funny how enough I've not watched that for many many a year actually I've no I'm not I'm not the greatest for looking at back at things you know because you get a bit embarrassed with the way you acted at times yeah. so I don't I don't like to watch it now that's interesting see I played the iBooks once in a charity game and I've got it on every night when I've got a beer in me <laughs> <laughs> for the for the two yard setter you missed <laughs> aye aye let's, uh, let's let's get that um, so, you, won, you won the you won the penalty that get the that get the first goal in the cup final. What's your, what's your memories of uh, winning the Skull Cup with the, with the Hibs team back in the day? Uh, well, that was great great memories for myself, you know, because obviously being brought up a Hibs supporter and playing in my first Cup final and, and winning it, great times. The year before, obviously, it wasn't so good. The, the Wallace Mercer take, try, take over, but kind of shoot the club for a wee while. But in terms of the day itself, that was a, it was a great day for the supporters and the, and the players. That's right. I remember when Wallace Mercer tried to take over Hibs. That was huge. Because obviously with his, his ties to Hearts and stuff like that, it would have been like, I don't know. Uh, I David, David, David Murray taking over Selick or Fergus McCann taking over Lord, Rangers. Lord, Lord Hockey putting money into Rangers. That was a rumour at one point. Could you imagine that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, would have, it, would have, it would have been on a par. Yep, 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 yep. See, I wasn't around yep. for most of that. As I would have just been about two-year-old at that time. But... I mean that that was a that's a really historic hub side. Who was the kind of best players you played with at that time, eh, Mickey? Well, I get, I get asked that question all the time, you know. So yeah. I, was very, I was very fortunate to play with a lot of very good players. Even obviously the cup final team, a lot of good players on that team. But even before that, I was very fortunate to play with a lot of good players, both in Scotland and England. So it changes all the time. I'll be honest, you know. People will always ask me the best player they played with, played against, and it kind of changes quite a lot. Cause you just, to be honest, you forget about the players you've played with, you know, and played against. So it's quite a difficult one. But uh, I don't like to upset people as well, because if you say something, they'll, they'll always come back. Hey, what do you not mention me for? What do you not mention me for? You know, say, well, you, I'm sorry, right, well, you just got upset, folks. Sorry, right, I'm sure they have one of regular listeners. See that guys? Uh, what, what, what I will say is. Uh, we've, had, we've had Murdo McLeod on the show a couple of weeks ago mm. and he played in that team and we had Joe Tortolano before and I think he played with Joe Tortolano, didn't he? Uh, Joe, Joe's a good friend of mine, great lad, great lad. Uh, likes, his, likes his McDonald's and that, but he's a nice <laughs> enough guy. McDonald's or shop? <laughs> I know. Uh, well, I got a text from him a couple of weeks ago, and he says I'm he's driving me nuts. I've not had a McDonald's for three, four weeks, and he he kind of did it for a couple of days with a McDonald's. So, <laughs> no, Murdo was a uh, Murdo was obviously a very good player, very good, very experienced when he came to have you. He'd been there, done it. You know, one cup finals, one leagues. He'd been there, done it. So he was a a very good player. But as I say, through my career, there've been so many good players to. I wouldn't like to throw one up there. If I was going to throw somebody up there, I've always said there was Steve Archibald who's probably a player that I thought was, was top class, you know. Aye, he was a great player. Great player. Um, mm-hmm. See, looking at that, at that cup final again, Mickey, sorry to get back to the cup final, but see the Dunfermline team mm-hmm. you played in that cup yeah. final. That's, that's, mm-hmm. produced some, that's produced some amount of brilliant managers, isn't it? Have you seen this? Aye, aye, you're right. Ian McCall, uh, David mm-hmm. Moyes, and Billy Davies all played against you in that cup final. That's crazy. That's, uh, really? fact, that's, that's a great fact, mate. Uh, as, 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 a lot of, as a lot of good, and, that's, and obviously Jockey Scotty took them, he's a very good manager as well, but now mm. you're right through so that team. I think Scott Leach, I think Scott Leach played as well. And he, he, Scott Leach? He, he that's right, in, Scott Leach I, played as well. I think he was, I think he's still at Motherwell, was he still at Motherwell? I think he's still at Motherwell, that's where then the younger lads, yes. Uh-huh. It's amazing when you look back at the players you played against, you know, and I always like to look and see how how the father went, but obviously David, David Moyes was the one that, that went to great heights as a manager, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, my dad met Alec Miller in uh, Palmanova, and uh, uh, basically I just want to say that, but how was Mark Alec, Alec Miller as a manager for, for yourself? 
for myself, he was, a, he was a very, very good coach. He was he was way ahead of his time. Uh, he was doing stuff way back then in the 1990s. They, they're, they're doing now, you know, the all the blood tests and things like that. Alec was way ahead of his time in terms of coaching. Right. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I never really got on well, well to be truthful as a as a really? player, uh, but I, and I, I admired him as a as a coach. And maybe know he's a manager, you know. I, I used to, I told him that before. I've told him that many times since then, you know. But it's uh, a great, I had great respect for him as a coach. He was, as I say, a very, very good coach. Well, I proved it when he went down to Liverpool and things like that. So is that because but, he had uh, 197 appearances for Rangers? Is that why he, why you didn't like uh, him as a player? No, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all, nothing at all. No, it was, uh, it was mainly. I just, uh, players will always be the same, you know. I've got different ways of. How the handle player? I just think his man management was at times I didn't didn't uh, well, feel to me at all, you know. So, mm-hmm. but in terms of coaching, that no, was definitely the best coach I ever worked under by uh, by a good street, yeah. So, Mickey, you had a couple of spells down in England as well. Um, what was yeah. what was your what was your experiences down there like? No, it was well. The, the, the first one when I went to Luton was not a great experience for me. It was uh, it was kind of. Uh, one of those, I was a bit impetuous as a young man, you know, and coming from Edinburgh, I'd been getting, at that time, Hibs and Hearts was obviously the, the, the big derbies, and me being an Edinburgh boy, I used to I used to get dogs abuse for, <laughs> for Hearts supporters every day of my life, so uh, I kind of, to be honest, I got, I got a bit fed up with, with, with the, the way that I was, uh, my cars were getting painted over, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I was quite young, and I got asked the question of it like, uh, it was it was quite a tough time. It just being young, you know, he just wanted to play football, but he didn't realise then the enormity of it until you played with the Hubs and then against the Hearts and and then what happened was I I just got asked the question, would I like to go to England? And then uh, I went, yeah, I'll, I'll take a bash it, and it just all happened very quickly to be honest. But in terms of it itself, it wasn't the one that worked out for me because I, I started to really struggle. In the days, it was a Luton was the old plastic pitch, you know, and uh, used to have to train on it every single day and it, it, it took its toll on me. I started to get really problems with my hamstrings and then back problems and I was there a very short spell and I knew right away this is, I'm, I'm struggling here with, with this pitch and then it, it kind of come back to haunt me a wee bit, you know. What was that pitch like? Was it basically just like concrete with a carpet over the top of it? I would say it was, it was one of the decent ones because I played at QPR's pitch was, was was probably the worst. That was like a carpet. That was just like it was like running on a, a road, you know, and a bit of plastic over the top of it. But looting itself, pitch was not too bad, but nothing to the what it's like nowadays. The 3G is way ahead, but but it was just a constant training on it. It's anybody that tells you it trains on astro pitch, you tell you, you get problems with your knees and your groins and things like that. And, it just never suited me at all, and I, I suffered with it later in my career, you know. So it was a, uh, it wasn't the greatest, to be honest. So what was it? What was it like when you went down to Millwall? I mean, you, you hear stories about, about that place, the Den, and all that. But I mean, we've all seen films and stuff like that, where it's portrayed as this pure madhouse. What was it like when you were hmm. actually there? No, I had. I had a good time. I was only there a short spell, but I, re- I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the the club itself. It was a uh, passionate, very passionate supporters. The supporters were great supporters, really passionate, and really followed the club everywhere. You know, I remember, I remember playing the uh, Tranmere on a, I think a Tuesday or a Wednesday night one time, and and I'm thinking to myself, well, there'll be many here the night, you know, and went up there and was struggling at the time. Didn't about my week struggling to, to get away for relegation and. I turned up there and there was something like 4,000 or something, 3, 4,000 Millwall on a Tuesday night. And I thought, unbelievable support. Just It's just a bit of a, a pity that the the reputation that comes along with them, you know. But in terms of a club, the people in that, I really enjoyed it there. They were, they were great, as I say, very passionate supporters. And uh, I really enjoyed it. But just as I say, the reputation went before them, really. I very passionate. Sorry, there you go. Aye, sorry, I actually think you do hear about them being pure vociferous and stuff like that, but um, I don't know, it's probably just bumped up, isn't it, for, for Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, you, you came back up the road and you came to Motherwell, um, and that's when your, your career started to wind down. 
um, obviously you got a couple of injuries and stuff like that. Um, what was what was it like uh, coming to the end of your career and and do you think do you still do you still keep your, your foot in the door at any clubs with training or anything like that? No, I don't. I'm not doing so much you now. No, it's well, it was a uh, it was one of those ones where I was really struggling. I was struggling to train and. You know, you're playing at the top level and that, and I knew if I, after about a season, just after a season, I was struggling with my back problems. I couldn't train every day, and and if you if you can't do that at the top level, you really it just goes for you. you. You'll never be able to play at a level. And it was just a couple of games that I struggled really bad, and I was, you know, I was a bit, I was a bit, uh, what would you say? I wasn't, I wasn't myself. I wasn't making the same, putting the same effort in because I felt that. Every time I came off the pitch, I was in agony, you know. So I thought, you know, I had to call it a day. But it was a horrible time because you know, when you've ever known this football all your days, you know, and suddenly it's taken away for you. But I was lucky enough to then go into the coaching side. Uh, Billy Davis was the manager and asked me if I'd like to go into the coaching side, which I did. So I went there for, I was in it for about two and a half, three years. Uh, but in my own career that time, I, I knew he was going to struggle. This was the first kind of season I was really. As I say, my back problems really got worse and worse, and then I had to just call it a day. It wasn't a great time, really. No, he's, he's still going to see Hibs these days. He's still going to watch them. I go and watch a few. I go and watch Hibs as much time as I can. You know, I've uh, seen, seen Mother quite a few times as well. But as many teams as I can. But I, 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 I like to still be involved in football. You know, I've, I've felt to a number of junior teams and. I've just recently just uh, left Bathgate Juniors, uh, which I had a good time with as well. You ever Always been to the Buffs Park? Myself, but... The where? Have you ever been to the Buffs Park and co winning? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I thought, Fredo's I thought, a big Buffs man. I'm a big Buffs fan. I like to know if anybody's had any experiences at Abbey Park. No, no, co winning. Is it co winning? Rangers, is that oh, right? Rangers, yeah, yeah. 10 uh, points. If you can name me any player that's played for the Buffs, 10 points. Uh, uh, a winning Rangers. No, does the boy Swift? Did the boy Swift play there? Or not the guy Swift. No, he's a, he was a, a manager. He ended up he played juniors as well. I had him at Motherwell. Swift is a co- he's still with a manager. I think he's a manager at one of the junior teams. I thought he might have played there, but obviously not. Mm, but there was a time when I was a, I was just into my wrestling. Hold on. <laughs> Stephen uh, Swift. Stephen Swift. I did. He did play for, Swift. He did play for the Buffs. I did play for the Buffs. Is that yeah, right? Ah, uh, uh, you're right. He did. I but he played with the Medan Orris comeback. So. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, Stephen. He came. Uh, he came. My mother was a good player. Actually, he came. My mother was a. Uh, I think he came on trial. Was he uh, fast, Becky? But... Yeah, he was quick. He was quick. He was a decent player. <laughs> he was a decent player. I was. He was quick, but uh, well, we had to be quick to play for Cowan Rangers because if we got beat, you had to run down that tunnel. Eh? <laughs> Unfortunately, my tunnel got burned down a couple of years ago, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> what rest, what rest you like to play for Cowan Rangers? Mickey, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It's an honour, big again. man. No problem. You take care of yourself, Aye. guys. Stay Thank good. you very uh, much, Mickey. Take Aye. care. Stay safe. Right, stay no safe. Problem, stay mate. struggling during this bye COVID. Bye. All right, bye bye. Hey, bye bye. Bye. Right, lads, there you go, Mickey Weir. Well played, my man. Well played. You pulled right. through. You pulled through. By the way, see you there. That could have been MD on the other end of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Stevie. Yeah. The launch is on your cell, mate. Well, uh, I'm feeling a bit of pressure because obviously. Big fucking Steve Lee, I got last week, you got this week, so it's on me this week, so feeling a bit of pressure, but I'll, I'll rise to the challenge. Well, wait a minute, we need, we need to find out what the score that Mr. Steve Lee got was last week. Well, actually, aye, we do. Um, we put it out to the punters to find out what the, the rating was on Keith Mark and SB out of five, and Grado, you are currently top of the leaderboard with a 3.6. Okay, we're in there, I'm delighted with that. 3.6, so we'll see what Mickey gets. I'll tell you about lads, I'm going to struggle to beat that. 3.6 to beat then for next week, and I'll bring on a legend next week. It's now time for our Beer 52 teaser for your chance to win a case of beer. All you have to do is answer the question we put to you. Last week, we asked you who was the only Scottish player to have played for three clubs twice. 
If you listen to episode 40 carefully, 40 weeks, holy shit, carefully, you would have realised that the answer we were looking for was Frank McAvenny, although we did accept Ali Graham. So the winner was Dale Nugent. So congratulations to Dale, Dale Nugent. That's it. A case of beer 52 is en route to you. Uh, this week's question to win the beers is, who is the only Ballon d'Or winner to have played in Scotland? Is that a, a Scotland team, mate, or a, a game? No, just to put played in Scotland, mate. That's Ronaldinho? It's not, Ron, it's not Ronaldinho, no, it's not. Played, he's okay. played for a Scottish club or he's played in Scotland, John? He's played in Scotland for a Scottish club. Oh. Right, okay. oh I don't know who that is. I'm not going to say. So that's a question for this week. You can enter by comment on the link on the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your answer to at Football Daft Pod. One of us must be 18 or over and stay in the UK. And guess what? You can get free beer for Beer 52 as well. It's a monthly subscription service for beer, which they source for the greatest small batch breweries all around the world. They theme cases every month for previous months, including Germany, South Africa, Korea, New Zealand, and more. All you need today is go to beer52.com forward slash... That's a, no a backslash, Ralph, Ralph wants his partner on Wrestling Daft, if you, want, if you want to hear me that, tune in. Uh, we can sort you out for three beers if you just cover the full 95 for the postage. You normally get eight, but as you're a Football Daft listener, we will give you two free extra beers, so that's a total of ten free beers. That'll do you for the night. Just go to beer52.com forward slash daft, that's the word beer, and then the number's five and two dot com to get your first case of ten beers for free. Hey, Chris, any other shite? Right, right, Ross, how you doing, mate? I'm not bad yourselves. I'm good, man. Don't hey, know, Ross, man. Hey, Ross, hey, Ross, hey, Ross, hey, Ross, do you care how to put your video on, mate? Nah, I'm just trying to sort it around. Are you taking yeah, time, son? What a handsome boy. There we go. I agree, don't big man. There we go. You said right. to my man, looking <laughs> good. Well, ah, that's what a Rangers player looks that's like. That's a Rangers player right That's a Rangers player. Right player. Like like tall, handsome, with a teeth. I hope that she's recording, John. This is great material. Rush. Okay, well, yeah, come and see how handsome he is. Come here. He's not Charlie Mulgrew. How handsome is that boy down there? Hey, Ross, come here. Put your face into the camera a wee bit more. He's a handsome boy, isn't he? Yeah, you're right. See, there you go. Stephanie, what about me? <laughs> that was a, that was Stephanie's sister. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Bring her back on. <laughs> I said bring her back on. <laughs> How you doing, Ross? You good, mate? Aye, no bad, lads, no bad. Just uh, keeping busy, yeah. Uh, you up here or are you doing south now? Where are you? Yeah, no, I'm up. I'm just outside this school, right? Oh, good, mate, good. So did you have to make that decision as soon as they said lockdown? Were you watching the news and you went, right, time to boost back up the road? I get told, uh, I can't know, roughly a few days before the lockdown, it was going to happen. So the Portsmouth manager just phoned me and said, like, get yourself up the road. Um, football's not going to be happening anytime soon, so get yourself up with the family. Up in the bunk bed, you and your, your, your twin brother? Aye, that was that, looking after his <laughs> brother. <laughs> what about CC? Just to see if he's staying together or what? Aye, we're staying together, aye. He's in the, he's in the garage. Oh, and he's is he? Ross, do you split, do you split long shooting in the hallway? <laughs> mate, my hole's not big enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mate, on, your, your hole would need to be massive. I saw you punting that ball that day. You went in goals, mate. It's the oh, biggest punt I've ever seen in my life. I, I, let's <laughs> talk about that right away because I was at that game. That blew my mind because I, the first thing that went through my mind was, oh my God, he's playing in goals before his brother. <laughs> and it, it's all in, off all in about us. We're just imagining the same thing. Who, whose decision was it for you to go in goals? Tell us this, what happened that day. Oh, mate, it was some laugh, mate. <laughs> some laugh? <laughs> Grigsy obviously did uh, get sent off, and then we're all standing on the pitch, the groupies, talking away, like, like who's going to go in? What's happening here? And Daniel Candias comes running over for the sideline. Uh, he's like, Ross, Ross, the gaffer, like, the gaffer said I have to go in. I turned around to Jacko, and I'm like, Jacko, I'm not going in, I can't do this. <laughs> no chance. Turned to Daniel, and I went, Daniel, fuck off, I'm not going in. <laughs> Jacko grabbed the strip. Jacko get gets his strip on, and then I was like, "Nah, Jacko, like you, you can't go in. You can't go in, mate." It's, I, I took I took it off him, and then I just thought, "Right, boys, I've got to go there." And, and, and your blood. 
Good job it was only a couple of minutes, so... Aye. Aye, because me and my up. mates were sitting there, and we thought, right, there's no long to go, because we were at the game, and I was sitting there, and I was going, right, and we all went, right, get McCrory in, because what Grado said to us, it's in his, goalkeeping blood's in his blood, you know what I mean? But mate, that punt, I've never seen a goalie, and you're not a goalie, <laughs> Mate, that nearly ended up halfway down Paisley Road West, that punt. <laughs> and it got some cheer as well, didn't it? Aye. It was it like, ah, as soon as he kicked the ball. To me, I just wanted to launch it as far away as possible, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what did your what brother say to you after the game? Uh, I think I see him. I seen him straight after it. Uh, to be fair, because like, I had well the stadium, and the fans and all that were there. So he was getting a bit of stick from the fans because I had been before. Hold <laughs> on, wait a wee minute. Did you say that your brother's in the gaffer now? Yeah, uh, he's in the garage. He's away. Get him on. The get him on. You'll be in soon. I'll get him when he comes in because he's just started the gym stuff. So you'll be in soon. Where is he just now? Is it Queen of the South? Uh, no, Livingston. Livingston. Uh, you joined uh, Livy for the second half of the season. Queen of the South, the first half. Hold on, where is he again? Livingston, isn't he? Aye, aye. He's, aye. A, good, he's a right good goalie, man. He's a, he's a right good He's got, has he got a punt like you, Bart Ross? Aye, Big Rab's got a punt, don't you, buddy? <laughs> he's got a punt. <laughs> hey, so, Ross, you were one of the first football players in the UK to get coronavirus. What? Mm-hmm. You heard it? I was, I heard it, mate, I heard it. No I way, man. It. So, how so, are you feeling? How, what, what was it? Talk us through it. How did tells, you feel? Tell us the symptoms, like? the signs. Um, well, you are, yes. I was at cut my front glass, right? And I got a phone call saying I had the coronavirus. <sighs> That's how mad it was. I didn't even know. Aye. So, I, did, I, you, I never, did you get tested being a football player or did you have symptoms? or? Uh, we got tested because he had Teta, the Arsenal manager. He, he got, he came up positive. So, all the Portsmouth got all the boys tested after we played them. Um, right. None of us had showed symptoms. Aye, none of us had showed symptoms at all. And, we were thinking, ah, we're fine. So we just did the test to think we're going to go back training just to be in the same safe side. Then uh, I came up positive and it was mental. I never had any symptoms at all. Do you know what I can't believe about that whole story? You don't get somebody to cut your grass. Fuck's sake, you cut your own grass. (laughs) Let's fuck do that for a tenner, mate. There's a guy who comes around every now and again, but I don't know where he was at that time. It's mental, so I take it you had to just self... What would you call it? Self-isolate yourself in a wee room or what? What was the deal? <laughs> no, man. You're really laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, I got a phone call from the doc from Rangers and he said uh, seven days, seven days self-isolating and my brother and his girlfriend were staying as well. So uh, they were 14 days. Aye. Aye, so I was pretty mad. Like, like if, I was, if I hadn't even got tested, I would never have known. So I could have been out. And, like, Aye. Never felt any different at all. So, you you never felt, so what you're telling us is we could have all have had it and we don't even know. Aye, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that, it could be loads of people like me that could have had the coronavirus and they don't even know. That's how easy it can spread. That's why, that's why everybody needs to stay in the fucking house, man. Oh, well, uh, that's, it's, it's, all, it's running away with itself, told me all these folk in Botanica Gardens and all that with their fucking taps off yesterday or whenever it was. Botanica? Yeah. Where's Botanica Gardens? <laughs> or whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> I'm not they were doing it at the Botanica Gardens. <laughs> no, I I'm never up that neck of the woods, but if I would I'd fucking be like that. Come on, him bath bed the lotties. <laughs> folk are just folk are just now because because of teased this big teaser on Sunday and they think that so much is gonna be lifted, folk are just have, have went fuck this. Aye. I think a lot of people Aye. have just lost the plot, Aye. unfortunately, which is daft because it's it's nowhere yet. It's just Touch selfish. Bed. That is selfish, mate. Nice. Ross, how have you been keeping yourself fit in lockdown then? What's been the regime? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> nah, well uh, Rangers and Portsmouth have sent me both programmes, so... So you've I've got double the work? Be, I've been... <laughs> so I've been going up between the both of them. Uh, just that then I run on that. Um, I've got a pitch just down the road, so... Just then I the wee bits of that. I've got stuff in my garage and at the gym, so... Uh, gym stuff in there, but it's... It's just all about being like the mental side of it. See, just because you're yourself. I've got my brother there right enough, but being away from the football and that is, is murder. Can you not just can you not just go at the back and hit shots into your bra? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got a deck in there on the concrete. Can't do that. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, I don't believe you because you said you were cutting the grass and you found out you were well. <laughs> Aye, a wee bit of grass, mate. A wee bit of the front. 
<laughs> but you're, you're so right. You, the, you've got your brother, but I wonder if there's some players, or some Rangers players, Celtic players, any players in Scotland or the UK um, that are sitting there in the house and they've not got any pals. All they've got is contact back home. They can hardly speak a word of English. You know, some of them must be right suffering. I never get home in time. Aye, that must Definitely. be affected quite a lot of them. Yeah, some of the foreign players as well wouldn't have been over. Um, see, that, that could have been me. I could have been stuck in Portsmouth, myself, down in the flat. But they, they've told me just before it was happening to get myself up the road. So I was quite lucky that way. Do you know if there is any players that are still here that you think, oh, that's a shame, man. He wants to get in the road. He wants to um, I'm not sure. I don't think any of the boys at Rangers, I think all of them got back, uh, right. back to see their families. I'm not sure, to be honest. How have you enjoyed your time at Portsmouth, Ross? Portsmouth? Um, <laughs> Is any fair to say Portsmouth? Maybe say Sportsmouth. Sport, I say Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Maybe say fucking Botanica Gardens. <laughs> Ross, I'll ask you again. Portsmouth. How have you been enjoying yourself in Portsmouth? How have you enjoyed Portsmouth? <laughs> Sportsmouth. Portsmouth. I call them Pompey. How have you enjoyed it doing at Pompey? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's brilliant to be fair. Um, see the boys done now, great bunch of lads. Um, we've kind of we got off to a sticky start at the start of the season. Um, then we picked up and we climbed right up the table. But since all this has happened, it's kind of it's a couple of chances. I think with promotion because I think we're fourth. No, joint third. Is that playoff place, Wendy's? I yeah, we're in the playoffs, but it's it's that tight. But if they cancel the league or whatever, then I think possibly we could just miss out. But we're not sure what's happening, so hopefully we can get back in, uh, try and push for that promotion. But no, it's been great to be honest. Really enjoyed that. Uh, what about the standard doing there? What about the standard of League One yeah. compared to up here? Would you think? It's good to be honest. I it was a uh, quite kind of surprised when I first went down. There's, uh, there's a lot of good players in that league. Um, they could easily come up. A lot of them could easily come up in Scotland and play as well. But uh, there's big teams though in that league as well. You've got you've got us Pompey, you got Sunderland there as well. Um, you ever heard a player join a club, right? And it's always the same question, isn't it? It's, how's how are you getting on? How's it, how's life? And it's they're a great bunch of lads. You never hear, oh, they're a fucking bunch of wankers off from <laughs> you know, the amount of fannies in that locker room. And, it, and it's always a great bunch of lads and we're doing well and all this. <laughs> never heard them they just say that, have you? Anyway, don't, worry, don't worry, Ross, you'll be able to say that when you go back up to Ibrox, mate. Just <laughs> <laughs> ignore him, Ross. <laughs> uh, fucking, as you don't, um, if you don't already know, one of the fucking, what do you call him? Willie Wonka's youngins, he's a Celtic fan. See if you're going to slag me, going to try and get the right fucking Yoko's in him. Right, let's <laughs> 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 In the podcast, <laughs> there we go. You know, take the clean, uh, the jaw clean off, Gredo, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, please. By the way, folk are wondering why. You've got first time experience now, Ross. Why? Oh, oh, hey, listen, <laughs> please don't, please don't make that news read Portsmouth. Don't make it like, don't, don't go down there. <laughs> don't, listen, don't try, don't try. Listen, what's it? I mean, I mean, right. this is this is what it does, right? He didn't even know your brother was at Livingston. He thought he was still at Queen of the South. He thought no. the Botanic Gardens is called Botanica. And then he tried to slag Tom, couldn't even fucking say the words. I meant to pull him, Barry. I remember it now. Hey, was that for? I've not seen it in years. He was just yeah. sitting here thinking. I know. Fucking <laughs> honestly, this is what we need to put with us, you know what I mean? No one fucking told was going to take the jaw clean off him, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Stevie, no one, no one are you in fucking left. That's <laughs> all true. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> um... Ross, I'd like to ask you about Pedro Cucina. I think he was a great guy, great bunch of brother, a great bunch of lads. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was your opinion on Pedro? And were you ever in his caravan? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he got some slagging for that, didn't he? Uh, oh, what was it? The, the dogs in the caravans keep moving. I was. I need to get that tattooed on me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Eric had a child? When you can't have a child, and he was going on about the seagulls following the trailer and all that shit, that was, the senior had just read Kant and his book and started <laughs> making up his own sheet. Aye. <laughs> Aye, How did there. you find it when he was there, Ross? Uh, well, he was the one that gave him a chance, to be fair. Um, I'm not going to lie, senior was probably the first manager that kind of believed him, he came in the first team. Because uh, the previous one, you had Mark Warburton and that, but I was kind of young at the time, but Kishina, he proper took a liking to me. Um, 
push me right into the first team. He came out and said in the press, start the season, I'd be, I'd be included in the first team as well. So he was the one that believed in me and gave him a chance. But it just it was unfortunate the, kind of, the way it worked out and he never really lasted long. Aye, because he said you're, you're basically the future of Scottish football, didn't he? He said you're going to be like a future Scotland captain and that, mate, didn't he? Aye, he came out and said that straight after, uh, <laughs> straight after my debut, to be fair. Aye, but, did you uh, feel a lot of pressure with that? Uh, aye, I did really, to be honest, but it was, it was a good pressure, though, I felt. It wasn't mm-hmm. like one of them where you're going to tell it was a crumble or that. It, was, it kind of gave you confidence, but to be honest, like when you're playing with Rangers, you've got pressure every, every week, innit? Aye, totally, mate, totally. So, what, what, how, how, what facilitated your move down south then? Um, you had a couple of, you had a couple of uh, loan moves up here, but then obviously you think you're getting into the first team as a regular, you've got the managers backing and stuff like that. Kishinia mm. uh, gets the, the bullet or whatever, and then the next thing you find yourself down in, down in England at uh, Portsmouth. So, <laughs> <laughs> Portsmouth. What, what facilitated that? How did that come about? Did you, um, did Gerard just want to get you a wee bit extra um, experience, or did he just feel that you maybe weren't a fit for the team that he would, the sort of style that he was wanting to play? Because the same kind of things happened to Greg Docherty as well. He came Aye. in and he got on. He started off really well, and now he's nowhere near the club. Never mind the first team. So, um, mm. what, what's, what's happened with yourself with that? Uh, to be fair, it was it was me that went to Gerard and I mentioned it to him. Um, I've been out and playing. Uh, getting a full season under my belt. Because um, the first season I came in, played more or less week in, week out. With Gerard, I was, uh, was kind of in and out of quite a lot. I was, I'm at the age now where I need to play regular. 22, so uh, I, I spoke to Gerard before the season was about to start. I said, look, look after I need to be playing week in, week out. And, uh, and the opportunity with Portsmouth for us, and I uh, had Sunderland there as well. So I was just taking a, a choice between the both of them. But, uh, but no, it was, for me, it was just to get down south, or just whatever it was, not really whether it was going to be down south or that, but I uh, up in Scotland, it was just to get playing games, playing as plenty as I could, and, and just develop as a, as a player. That was, that was just my development I was thinking would come first. Aye. And the end game, obviously, man, is to get back up playing for Rangers, isn't it? Aye, aye of course. That's obviously, it's my, it's, that, that was my dream playing for Rangers, and and I've had two seasons, but obviously that's, that's the aim. You want to be like you want to play with Rangers because it's a huge club, and I've been a boyhood fan since since we guys. So, uh, but it'll, as I say, we need to see if this season's going to even start back again or get back, back up the road. To be honest, but we'll wait and see. You ever remember bumping into me at Somerset Park? Hey, <laughs> uh, <laughs> remember that? This? First time I ever met Grado was at Somerset Park. That was yes. Awesome. Snowing like fuck, remember? Uh, <laughs> horrible, horrible day. Who was getting asked for more selfies, me or you? every fucking turn, you bastard. He's absolutely shameless, man. He's shameless. Nah, mate, I had my hood up and that, right? I was uh, he was disguised. I was like, I'm restore energy. Oh, no, I'm a swag, <laughs> all, right? a, big, a big sign saying Grado. <laughs> <laughs> but well, certain... I was, right, so I went to go and watch the game. Uh, I got in the turnstiles. I was doing well. Hood up in that. Never get noticed. I hear this big voice feel like coming like the back of me. Hey, McCrory! It's great though. <laughs> he puts his arm on me. The phone's already <laughs> getting a selfie. Next minute, man, we just got fucking higgled. Rumbled, man. man well rumbled. Got, though, Probably never get peace all game because of me. <laughs> Sit, sitting asking you questions about your career and all that, then Grado hits it with who get me a selfie? Me or you at Somerset Park? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, see what you're saying there about the fans crowding you and all that? There's a lot of Belton football songs in Scottish football, but the one that they sing for you has got to be up there with the best of them, and at the Oasis number, my man. It's a right. fucking brother, mate. That must be some boys when you're on the pitch and they start singing that, man. Aye, that was brilliant to be fair. The first time they were sang it, I actually wanted to look twice. Because I had to, like, to hear it and I was like, ah, that's, I didn't come through that kind of stuff, innit? Aye. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not, wanna, it's not a wannabe Edward, but it's still alright, man. <laughs> Chris, that's plenty. <laughs> right. yeah. Res- show it. <laughs> See the same respect you show to Murder McLeod and all that? Please show that to Ross McClory. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> Fuck it with your neck in, if you've got one. <laughs> 
Gredon, Gredon, wind your chin. The fifth one down. <laughs> Listen, mate, I've only got one fucking double chin and it's fucking non size. I could be good in the seven stain, I'd still have this fucking big sack of shock totties under my neck. So don't even I'm go start, there with my chin. I'm starting to be a bit like a fucking turkey, to be honest with you. <laughs> Aye. Do you, do you own Panto, man? Gredo lost all this weight, man. Still had his wee chin and his chicken tits, man. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> chicken tits. Uh, that's what Bob Malcolm has uh, tagged me as. Fucking chicken tits, which will probably stay for me for a wee bit. Malcolm, who the fuck's that? <laughs> hey, Ross. Back back to the guest and talk about your chicken tits. Sorry, mate. Right. Sorry. Ross, do you prepare... Do you prefer playing midfield or centre half? Um, probably midfield. Uh, I've not played centre half in what's that, about two years now, mm-hmm. so I uh, played midfield. To be honest, at Pompey, I've been playing right back. Right. That's where uh, they played me there. But I think that's just because the system. They play a different system to Rangers, and it can uh, so it's very right back where the coach now. You know, getting peed off with a lot of people on Twitter saying stuff like that, that must get to you frustrating when folk are going, oh, Portsmouth are playing uh, McCrory in the rank position, did, 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 did the Rangers need to bring him back up through ASAP? Was that frustrating you when you were getting, you know, that sort of, they, these sort of comments when you think to yourself, listen, why is your neck in? You's, you don't know what you're talking about. That's an idea. <laughs> but no, yeah, you're that. right. No, you're right, honestly. It was, a lot of people don't know the youth system. I played right back right up for the youth. There you go. So a lot of people think I've never played right back in my life. There you um, go. And then that's, that's, I, I got quite a lot of tweets to be fair saying what you were saying there. And it was kind of frustrating because I can play well at right back. As I feel as if I'm just equally adept at playing right back and centre mid. You can play well at right back, can you? Hmm. <laughs> oh, what are you thinking? Hmm. <laughs> hey, I think, honestly, when you played midfield, mate, honestly, I think we were midfield a lot of times in the spell when you were coming in, man, to play midfield. You just gave us that bit of dig all the time. You just you weren't you weren't shy at tackle. You just made us a bit more solid in there. I think that's when I've seen you playing. So I got a season ticket. Every time I seen you playing, I think midfield you just added that bit of solidarity in the middle of the park. Great. I've got a season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because I've seen the boy play. I've got a telly, Stevie. <laughs> You've got a dodgy box, Toby. What are you talking about? You got again. Toby's been watching the Belarus fucking Premier League every week on his dodgy box, man. Yeah, listen. <laughs> was, was it the game, though, at the Parkhead? Remember, Bob, one that I was writing all well? Is that not the game that, that he really, really played well in, Ross? Oh, Ross. Well, I, I, game I was I was ill. New Year? Aye. I was at the, the, the Nutnich game maybe a couple of years ago. Was it that game? Oh, right, aye. Aye, so aye. Aye, aye no, that, was, that was my first season. Aye. You played really well in that game, but I missed it because I was I had fucking mega flu, didn't I remember? Remember that? I'm okay. over, eh? I was there. <laughs> remember, I'm yes. shaking myself at the side of the stage before we were out to go and stuff like that, but no. We had to have emergency pants in the wings for them, man. Emergency pants. Oh, no. If folk don't know what the wings is, it's straight next to the curtain. And about 10 minutes before we were about to go, and I farted and fucking fell through. I wanted to run it and buy my pair of Puma pants, medium, by the way, for JD Sports. <laughs> nightmare, eh? That is a nightmare. <laughs> So I, so you always I always come down with something during panel, and it was just shot it was shite this time that it was during the, the old fun game, wasn't it, Bob? It was. <laughs> I was jumping about because we played well that day. I'm jumping about uh, watching the game, fucking kicking every ball, and he's just sitting there, man, like a fucking bus couch. I know it's fucking I've never cared. I didn't even fun, care man. about the. I'm like, that's no. He must. I'm like that to the boss, man. No, look, he didn't even watch any of the game, so he must be really no well. Uh, he's saying himself. <laughs> Oh, so what's it like with Stevie G Ross? Aye, how cool is he? Stevie Gerrard, what's it like with him there? Oh, brilliant. Um, see, when he first came in, they, obviously it's like Stevie G, he's a legend. Um, all the boys were like, we're, we're all shocked that the manager's like, he's a legend in that and he's come in and took the Rangers job. So when he came in, uh, just this aura about him as well. He's, uh, it was, it was Unreal, like just having him there and like the training. He's bra- he's raised all the standards. Um, everyone since since we've been in here the last two seasons is uh, is just raised and it's, it's, it's he's been excellent to be fair, man. He's he's helped us get quite a bit. Probably, well, man. It's good to hear you that. Remember man. the first okay. time you spoke to him, like one on one. Um, I always shake myself on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember did he know it, I was, about uh, you, or did he was it kind of like tell me something about you? Was it all that kind of thing? Tell me something. Nah, about it was, it was him and Gaz, uh, 
Gaz Market took me in the gym. I was just doing them upper body stuff. I mean, Gaz Marker standing in the gym, shot me over. Fucking heart's gone like that at him. <laughs> I bet you. And uh, no, he just spoke away to me, introduced himself. Well, he didn't need to introduce himself, but uh, then uh, he just asked me about positions. He asked me about centre back, centre mid. He asked me what I prefer, and I just said, obviously, I've been playing centre mid quite a lot. So I said, centre mid, and I was playing well at the time. He just gave me a few pointers, but uh, that was really it kind of made you comfortable then to that point on to, to talk to him. Probably. You know, find that um, with regards to having played at centre half quite a lot as well. You know, do you know think that if you had stayed there, you would have, you would have got a lot of games this season because Rangers have kind of struggled for centre half this season. You know what I mean? All right, they've they've had mm-hmm. like, they've got they've got a, a load of centre halves, but. He's been chopping and changing. People have been having bad games, getting dropped and stuff like that. And a lot of them maybe aren't there on full merit. Do you know what I mean? Do you ever think that uh, if you'd have stayed there, you would have been you would have been more in the first team plans than you maybe originally expected to be? Um, I think with centre half, it's, it's a difficult one because myself, I think probably better than centre mid. But with centre half, like I'm not as big as the rest of them. I don't think I've got that kind of physical. But I've still got a physical presence. But when you look at at that time, there was Bruno Alves, not not the, the big boys uh, playing. But I think for me, when I was playing centre half, I used my pace quite a lot just to kind of cover that side because I wasn't as physical. I think but, Stephen uh, Gerrard would have been contradicting himself there because the first I remember one of the first things that he said. I know you're saying, was, man. I, I he says uh, you're not a centre half. He says mm-hmm. you're a centre mid, midfielder. So I don't think he would ever put you there. No, I didn't. I was right to be fair because. I think that first season, my best games were probably centre mid. And it's that, that old form game we'd be doing all now um, at Parkhead was, that, that was probably one of my best games that season. And I think the, the gaffer looked at that and he, he just took it into the next season. He said, look, you're, got, you're going to be a centre mid. 100%. What's, what's Alfredo Morelos like in the dressing room? It's quite quiet, to be fair. Is he? Um, his wee pal Daniel, wasn't it? Like, he's left now, so I don't know. I've not been up for a, a while, but he's quite quiet, but he's, he's <laughs> funny. Aye, ah, they were, they were heavy muckle. They were our best pals, but weren't they? Can be ask him where they were? They were. His English is not great, but he's getting there. But uh, no, he's he's a good boy to have a bit of change. Tell, he's excellent. Tell me this one. She, uh, Morelos and Candace, she behind your back. Did you ever call them the cartel? <laughs> no. No, no way. What's the dressing room like? Is a whole is it a good dressing room up at Rangers and Ross? Well, you're not there now, but the last time you were up, is it a good dressing room? Uh, last time I was, I boys are tremendous. Who's your home. best pal? Who's my best pal? Aye. Yeah, I got on well with Big Nico, Big Cat, Big yeah. Cat, good pals. Aye. Go for Nando's and that. Aye. I went for a few Nando's, but that's the other one. We went for a wee, what is it, grill in the corner? The one oh, I yeah. I have yes. one. <laughs> that's Bob's, that, that was Bob's favourite restaurant until uh, I tell him about Steak and Carter. No, no, what do you call it? Mother and Carter. Yeah. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's what we get all this salted, we'll be going to Mother and Carter. Aye, definitely, man. Definitely. Anything right. to yeah, try, and hang, try and, you know what I mean? You can if it's if it's close season, Ross, you're more than welcome to join us. Aye. <laughs> uh, okay, Ross, you don't want to group with us, man. Fuck's sake. No <laughs> chance, man. No chance. Me and Bob talk about the topic of the time we want now. I know. <laughs> Stevie G, but uh, why are you going out with the fat guy and the two midgets? What's that all about? What are you going to do with the crying keys and Terry and Lana stuff for? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that last guy, but I, the Crankies was funny. Game of Thrones, man. Terry and Lannister, oh, man. Game of Thrones. Sorry, Grads. I'll, I'll, need to, I'll need to keep it up with you. I'll, wrestle, I'll talk about wrestlers. So, Ross, <laughs> how are you enjoying this podcast? You enjoying it, mate? Oh, brilliant. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. I forgot, I forgot we had a fucking guest on there. For I know. Man. Oh, man. I Sorry, know we're stu- <laughs> Sorry we're stooping too low for you here, man. <laughs> that was another one. <laughs> that was too old, Graham. Ross, tell me about your first goal for Rangers. What was it like? Um, that was a part of the first one. Uh, four hours, a dream come true. That was uh, pretty amazing, to be fair. See when the ball hit the back end and the fans are just a roar. Um, I actually did a knee slide, to be fair, and I've never did a knee slide in my life. 
and that was my <laughs> celebration. <laughs> Did that uh, guarantee his European football that season? That what, goal? the Fisher goal? Aye. Uh, no, no, because that, that one was early in the season. Aye, I right. think my other one was Aberdeen. Mate, your goal at Petodre that night, man, that was, oh, that was sure. stupendous. Okay. That was brilliant. probably the worst goal ever, you know, Hank. Oh, mate, <laughs> mate, it was sweet as fuck, man. Honestly, it was brilliant. <laughs> Any goal, mm. any goal for a Rangers player against Aberdeen must be a buzz because he's fucking hate each other, don't he? Exactly. It was, who, it was... who, who was your um, kind of Rangers hero growing up? Because it's funny, I've been at Ibrox a few times. I've seen some of the ex-players talk to you, Richard Goff and all that. <laughs> but who was, who was some of the players that you grew up idolising? Oh, for when you hear this, big, big uh, Magic Baguera. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Hi. Wait, big Boogie. Oh, Wait, no. Big Boogie was a player, man. Well, oh, See the yeah, runs, man. Yeah. Magic Baguera was your favourite player growing up. You've no oh, idea how mate. fucking old that makes me feel, mate. Exactly, cool. <laughs> Have you seen him run against Dundee United? He's going against Dundee <laughs> United at Ibrox. She took the words out of my mouth, mate. That That's one. Is that the night we won like 5 0? Was that Boyd? They got his record, didn't they, that game? 5 0. We won. I'm sure that's the same it game. Mate, I've been, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's mate. We should know. <laughs> 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 you got a season ticket. <laughs> 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 anyway, who were we? Well, it was so, Beguera was a hero. Was, aye, Beguera. Uh, see, to be honest, I used to get into trouble on the youth team. Because when I played centre-back, I tried to be like Beguera, so I'd go on Maisie's for centre-back. <laughs> <laughs> so Holland used to say to me every time, get me into trouble. Uh, he, still, he still reminds me to this day. Nice. Aye, but nah, Big Beguera, was, he was the one for me. It was a class act, man. It was brilliant. I some player right enough. Should have been sent off about 17 times in that cup game. Oh, like that. here we go. <laughs> God, he's a pish. He fucking kicked oh, Robbie Keane up the pitch the whole, the whole fucking game. <laughs> I corrected it. Remember the time, uh, was it Big Kyriakos put a tackle and the referee booked him and he fucking clapped his hands at the ref, the referee sent him up. <laughs> I do remember that. Satirius <laughs> Kyriakos. <laughs> you would have never have thought he'd have went on to Liverpool after me. Yeah, I remember my first signed him. You should know, you should just sign better me when we first signed him. Him and Ronald Watteris. I mean, doing him punches at Parkhead. That's right, I remember that. What a game Kyriakos had that game. It was 4 2, eh? Aye, aye. Right, aye. Big man. Oh, he's a big man. He was, man. Right, Ross. Every week on this, we do a quiz. Are you up for it? A quiz off. Right, here we go. I did a pub <laughs> quiz there, right there. Came last, so I better do about this one. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be a good one, this one, I think. Aye, it's a 90-second <laughs> football quiz, right? We've got a leaderboard. Right. Currently, top of the leaderboard is Barry Ferguson. You ever heard of him? Oh, of course I have. <laughs> have you heard of David McCracken? <laughs> well, he's on one. <laughs> Aye. Barry Ferguson's on 12. Alan Archibald, Brian Prunter on 11. Murdo McLeod's on 10. Ian Murray's on 7. Lee Miller, Jordan Young, Bob Malcolm are on 6. Frank McAvenny and Dick Camber are on 5. Lovin Kranz is on 3. So, mate, you got a good chance of beating Lovencrantz, haven't you? Uh, I've got to be free. Surely. Got to. Right. Three. You've got to do mail and free. Come on. Who's doing the, who's doing the questions? Bob. Bob, right. Yeah, I'll right. Fine right. then, aye. Right. right. So you can Ross, you can pass. You need to give an answer, right? Need to give an answer? Right. Aye, you can pass. 90 seconds. Producer John, we get 90 seconds on the clock. Yep. Right, here we go. Right. Peter Grant is the current manager of what side? Glasgow City. Who is Rangers record signing? Uh, Tory Andrew Fall. What year were Portsmouth formed? Right, uh, 18... No, no, 19, 1920. What, what colour does Stenhouse Muir play in? Um, brown. What team does Oliver McBurney play for? Sheffield United. Who's better in goals, you or your brother? Me. <laughs> what team look like having their stadium sponsored by Amazon? Tottenham. Uh, what Euro League is set to go behind closed doors on May the 16th? Germany. 
How many Scotland under 21 caps do you have? That's a tough one, I don't even know. <laughs> Ready, push, yeah, pick a number. Yeah, Hurry up, because I want to answer this question, go. Right, who is the current manager of Glasgow City? <laughs> Is it all Peter Grant, you know? Or no, Scott Booth in it? Right, which team were awarded the Scottish Lowland League? Hawking Lake. Who is Rangers' second top goal scorer this season? <sighs> Time! Oh, oh, that was funny. That was funny because you said Peter Grant's the <laughs> manager of Glasgow City then. <laughs> Who's the current manager of Glasgow City? <laughs> I think you done all right, mate. I think you done all right. How did he do, John? I hope so. As long as I beat three, I'll take that. Let me just count up here. So well done, Ross. Did really well there. Not certainly not bottom in the leaderboard. Uh, let's go through the wrong answers. Uh, what year were Portsmouth formed? You said 1920. It's on the badge, mate. 1898. Uh, Steny play in maroon and not brown. Uh, I'll give. They have the got badge. a kind of brown badge. Sort of grey, do I? Uh, but it's more maroon. Um, who's better in games, you or your brother? I'll give you the fact that you said yourself. Let's put yourself. Ah, uh, hundred percent. Please. He's me. played for Rangers. Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many? How got another twenty ca- one caps? Fourteen. Does that sound about right? Don't know. Don't know, mate. Oh, <laughs> don't know. Quite a lot. I honestly, don't know. We'll take Wikipedia's answer on that one. It was Kelty Hearts who won the, the Scottish Low One League. That's Barry Ferguson's team. Uh, they won the, the Low One League. So well done, Ross. You scored six. Oh, well done, mate. Well done, my man. You're joined with Lee Miller, Jordan Young, and Bob Malcolm, mate. Oh, I'll do that. Joined with Bob Malcolm. Oh, Aye. <laughs> you must feel really intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so have you enjoyed your retime on this podcast? Oh, it's been brilliant. Aye, loved it. Well, we really, really thank you. Really thank you for you coming on. Honestly, it means a lot, mate. Your brother and I, I never even met your brother. We'll get him on oh, one week. He's still out there. He's still out <laughs> in the garage. Ah, he's keeping back. He better be hitting the ball off the wall and jumping and trying to save it and all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ross, thanks a lot for coming on, mate. I really Aye, appreciate mate. it, bud. Aye, no worries. No right, worries cheers, Ross. Thanks very much, mate. Right, thanks, See you, right? I'm on. Bye bye. You're the best, pal. Big Ross is a handsome boy, ain't he, man? Mate, how, it was just a big, bright, a big, bright, handsome guy come on the screen, didn't it? Aye. He made us all look fucking honking, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's got used on his side, though, eh? Aye. Big butt. He made us look hack as fuck. We're like that when he comes on. <laughs> all right, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> He's like that. All right, teeth. boys. <laughs> You're cold, get smile on that. I'm like that, getting Stephanie's sister. Come on, check your ass. <laughs> Sitting there, pure fucking chiselled shooters and all that, man. Pure big fucking white smile. You're sitting slugging your beer. I've got my Pepsi Max and all that with my fucking DIY haircut. All right, mate. I've got a teacup full of cola. <laughs> John, sitting me fucking scabby Falkirk tap on and all that. <laughs>
Lockdown is a scary time, so I thought I would do something with a rhyme. Not all heroes were capes, they came in all different shapes. I know right now things, are, things seem strange, but pretty soon it could change. Every Thursday we stand with pots and pans to show the NHS. We are the biggest fans. So remember, stay home, stay safe, and for all the mums and dads, please be here. There you go. Oh, well done, well, that was brilliant. She's scared, she's away. Oh, that was beautiful, mate. That was honestly great. That was great, mate. I can't deal with stuff like that, Bobby. You can't deal with it. Then, mate, I'm getting all teared up. She wrote that herself, man. That was brilliant. So, Trout, stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. All the best. As well as Pardon says, save our NHS. Save everyone. Oh, still again. Stay home and save lives. Aye. Do you want to pick up in, because we'll do the, I'll put the River City uh, rock uh, theme behind. Aye, aye, aye. aye. And do you know what? That, uh, hold on. Bob, that is honestly good to me. That has really touched a couple of strings in, mate. That was, you've raised a, a great girl, a great girl, which only makes it appropriate to leave this show once again with your entrance music, the last ever wrestling show to be in Scotland in the Glasgow Pavilion in front of 2,000 fans. <laughs> The song that should be the River City theme tune, but it's no. Please hit from Neil McDougall, the River City Shell Suit Bob remix. Thanks everybody for tuning in to Football Da. See you next week. We've got Chris Paul the drums, John in the keyboard, and Bob in a leather jacket. 